Good morning. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Redding, California, uh, Facebook Live. Uh, we're here in our center with our sound team and Judy Preble, and today we're gonna have our message from uh, Reverend Sue miller Born. And I'm Charlie Bourne. Uh, I'm your practitioner uh, for the day. And so we, we welcome everybody to this service. And we're going to begin with a wonderful song by Judy Preble. Judy? Wow, thank you, Judy. That was beautiful. So I'd like to uh, cover a few invitations for you, uh, announcements. Uh, but first of all, I want to acknowledge and say thank you to everybody who brought in uh, stuffed animals over, over the last few weeks. If we could pan um, or show on the camera all the stuffed animals that have been collected over the last few weeks, these are going to the Reading Police Department and then they'll be given out to children, you know, children who need that extra love or something to cuddle and hold on to for their safety and security. And this has been a wonderful program over the last few years. And I think it's just amazing how many we've collected this year. So thank you so much. Also, this is the end of our, um, of our, um, well, actually what I want to move on to. <laughs> is to acknowledge that we have a few things going on this week. We have Sacred Sisters uh, Women's Group with Reverend Sue, and that's going to be by Zoom. Uh, so you can contact her or the office to, to get the, the Zoom link for that, but that'll be Monday night, 7 to 8.30. And the title of it is, What I Learned About Myself in 2020. The men's group with Roy Wolfstag will be tomorrow night as well, and that's from 7 to 9 p.m. and it's online via Zoom. So you can get that through the center or contacting Roy Wolstead. Also, we have a workshop coming up with Reverend Sue, Reverend Sue Miller-Born, Saturdays, December 19th, 9 to noon, online via Zoom, and pre-registration is required. And it's about a vision, visioning our hopes and dreams for 
a wonderful and phenomenal 2021. So if restrictions are lifted and we're able to meet in person, we will do that. But for right now, it's set up to be via Zoom. And then we have our, just a reminder for everybody, we have our Christmas Eve service. We've been working on that the last few weeks and getting it all prepared. And that's going to be Facebook Live. And it's uh, Out of the Darkness into the Light, Thursday, December 24th, 7 p.m. And again, it's on Facebook Live. So it's a unique opportunity to come together. We're going to have the choir, Reverend Mary and Reverend Sue speaking. Uh, we're going to have a candle lighting ceremony. And uh, it should be a very special, special time for you. And then last, I want to announce that we have some board at member um, vacancies coming up starting in March of 2021. And so if you're interested, you can pick up an application. You can call the office. We can email it to you or somehow we'll get in touch and we'll, we'll get you that application. But the requirements are membership with the center for at least one year and completion of at least two science and mind classes. And the board members serve for three years. Um, and actually, you can download that application from our website. So now I'd like to go into our reading for today, followed by an invitation of the bell. And then we'll go into a prayer. And then we'll have our talk by Reverend Sue. So today's reading is part of a summary of ideas about collective meditation by Nancy Anderson. Our consciousness expands through meditation and contemplation, through conscious communion with the invisible, and through our intuition, which is the voice of spirit in us. When we are waiting on the divine presence and listening to the voice of God through our intuition, we come into a consciousness of peace and a realization that we are all belong to this one human family. To meditate upon the presence of God is to draw the universe into one's own soul. Ernest Holmes encourages us to see that meditation is at the heart of all world religions and faith traditions, and our outlook is to be a universal one. Every man's mind is an inlet to the divine. There is tolerance in this concept and inclusion. The infinite is all-inclusive, all-embracing, all-comprehending. You will work in harmony with all religious beliefs since all seek in their different ways the final and ultimate cause, God, to whom we have given the, the name of love. Please join with me in knowing that there is just one, one love, one God, one spirit everywhere present. And I know for a fact, deep within my soul, that this exists, this one presence exists within each and every one of us, expressing itself in its own individual, unique way as us, but all part of the one. And so today I anchor into that knowing and allow myself to be touched by the urge to grow into more of who I was meant to be, to be embracing and to love and to understand and to accept the diversity in this world and to know that it is all, all for the perpetuation of life and all that we are here to do, which is to serve, surrender, and to love. So I know for today and today's service and the message from Reverend Sue, that I have an open heart and an open mind to her words of wisdom as she shares her thoughts in today's message. 
today's special message. We know that today is a special day and we give great thanks. We give great thanks for so many things in this world and this life. Despite the, the times and struggle that we have, we know that there is an outcome that's good and that we are moved to go beyond and keep going beyond into a place of love and inclusion. So I give thanks for today, for this center, and for the words of Reverend Sue today. So I release these words and this treatment into law, knowing full well it is so. And together we say, and so it is. And thank you, Judy, for the piano. Reverend Sue. Good morning. Beautiful music, beautiful prayer, preparing the way. That's exactly how it is. That gentle, that easy, that welcomed in all that we do. So I've invited a few friends to, to join me on stage here, these little fellows. This one in particular. He's one of the first ones that arrived. He's, he's a puppet. And dang it, I just think he's, I think he's just so cute. Yes, so I'm going to speak with these fellows just surrounding me with love. This is the last day, so they, they're going to leave the stage this week, so we'll miss them. They're our audience. So, also, this is the last day for our gift baskets, and I think Charlie was going to mention that at the end, but I just want to tag that on if you were, oh, I forgot to get my raffle ticket. You know, we're here till 11, so you can race down here and and purchase your ticket still. But preparing the way, let me get to my message here. So remember how we started the year 2020? We had great hopes, right? We had this, everybody was kind of uh, taglining on to that, oh, the 2020 vision, it's perfect. We're gonna see things clearly this year. And then just getting out of the starting gate, we were blindsided. And it became a series then of continuous setbacks, uh, death, and being asked to surrender to a way of life that none of us were prepared for or had any tools to navigate. But as always, towards the end of every year, energy is shifting to prepare the way. To prepare the way for your heart to continue to open to gratitude no matter what's going on in the world. Prepare you once again to pay attention to those around you that you value, that you love, that you appreciate. Pay attention, prepare the way. So we can say that this year more than ever, with so much separation, loss, disagreements, that it's even more personal and more valued this year. Does it mean we have to get caught up in all the craziness of the holidays? Well, here's where the choice is. And I know part of us throughout the year, I know I, have, I found myself whispering when I would come up against something that I didn't like or somebody said something I disagreed with and it felt harsh to me. I thought, well, you're off my list. And now it's Christmas. So do I put them back on the list? Do I, do I love bigger? Do I open my heart to those that I, f I find um, oh, some of my belief systems bump up against theirs and I don't feel always that oneness? Or do I put all that down and go into that meditative state where Ernest Holmes reminds us continually, keep going. Keep going into the divine knowing of what the deep love really is. Not that superficial getting annoyed with each other kind of experience. But go deeper, prepare the way, the choice is yours. So take these days, these holy days, and, and sit with the questions, what does this all mean to me? What does it mean to me personally? Separate it out from what the human race has hijacked it into and really ask yourself, what does it mean to me to celebrate the ones that I love through a meal, a card, a call, a gift. What's it like to, to just grumble about it all and feel the pressure to do it anyway? Are you falling into that? Are you really that miserable 
miserable about all of that's going on with the holidays, are you really that upset about it? Or are you approaching it like a sloth and dragging it out before you? Where is your energy? Where are you investing a deep heart of your being? And is there satisfaction in any of your reflections? Are you feeling more peaceful by the time you are done ruminating about the holiday? Do you have a plan? Are you preparing the way? So we enter holy days. That's what these, from Thanksgiving on to the end of the year, we have the opportunity to tap into a deep level of joy and to look forward to what we can do and not feel like we're buying into commercialism. But we are indeed choosing right now to prepare the way because ultimately we are preparing for that divine love to be expressed through us once again, wholeheartedly investing our heart to divine love, to sense a rebirth of the consciousness of the Christ. Christ, as Ernest Holmes reminds us, is the word of God manifest in and through each of us. It is a universal idea, and we connect with that nature when we can surrender, remember this, when we can surrender a limited sense of life to that divine realization of wholeness and unity with good, with the Spirit of God, the Christ within each one of us, within all of us, all of us. This absolute is nurtured and cared for and remembered each year through many cultural rituals and celebrations, and we gra gather in a group consciousness that ultimately lifts us into this field of even a greater understanding and kindness. Now, one of my favorite writers who does a Q&A in the Spirituality and Health magazine is um, Rabbi Rami Shapiro. And this month, this letter came to him that he received. This is the, this is the question. I am a warrior in the war on Christmas. I greet people with happy holidays rather than Merry Christmas, even when I know they're Christians. I put a bumper sticker on my car that says, Christmas trees are for the Druids. I find Christmas offensive, but I'm tired of being a Grinch. What can I do to get over this? And the answer, only as the rabbi could express it, what you have to get over is yourself. I understand that holy days can be so co-opted by politics, commercialism, as to mute their true meaning, but your reaction isn't about the true meaning of Christmas. It is about your need to let Christians know that you're too smart and clever to be trapped by Christmas. Your behavior, however, suggests just the opposite. You're completely trapped. There's that big zing of the rabbi. My suggestion is spend the next five Christmas seasons in a country that does not celebrate Christmas, and on the sixth season stay home and wish someone a Merry Christmas. Hopefully by then you will have left the war and joined the peace. Simplify. Simplify. This is that time of year. You can feel it these days. Days are shorter, nights are longer. And we can sit in the darkness, we can light candles, we can uh, sprinkle our home with different twinkle lights, and we can celebrate the darkness and shed some light on the many blessings that are in our lives. We can keep it very simple. We can spend some time even just gazing out into the trees and watching the birds harvest their berries. We can make simple soups and, and read a story by the fireplace or wrap ourselves up in warm blankets and slippers. We can prepare the way for ourselves in these simple practices to simply come home, come home to yourself, to your true self. We look deep within to that inner light of peace. These days can truly be the relief as you deeply connect to your own heart's spiritual awakening. That's the invitation I see in December. Hear that whisper to come closer, to come closer and to discover the abundance that is filling your life. What questions are coming to you in that thought field? And in that moment, decide to be the one who cares. Decide to be the one 
that can discover the many ways that you can show up, that you can show up and love another human being. Ernest Holmes says, wake up. Your word is all powerful. Your consciousness is one with omnipotence. Your thoughts are infinite. Your destiny is eternal. And your home is the everlasting heaven. And what is heaven? Happiness. Realize this truth. I am a living in a perfect universe and always will be perfect. Now, it's a great invitation to be part of this love that's unfolding at this time of year, but even a greater invitation to be part of a global movement, a global consciousness of peace and well-being to all, to radiate this peaceful influence in every choice you make. Think about this field of coherence in the collective consciousness of peace. It is what those that follow the Maharishi effect continue to invest their meditation practice to. There are many clusters of devoted disciples of peace, and they sit in clusters, and they lift to this field of divine knowing, of divine peace. They saturate that field. It is a magnetic pull to the rest of civilization to draw unto that the Maharishi effect. It is also known in the Heart Math as an opportunity, Heart Math Institute, to continue to shine an understanding towards this truth. As we meditate together, as we pray together, we are lifting the consciousness. We are preparing the way. We celebrate that reemergence of an inner light, that inner Christ. So much intention is set by devoting yourself to practices that enhance this field, that enhance as you sit quietly in your meditation. Ethan was here this morning, and I, I observed him sitting in that consciousness, recognizing that he's, he's allowing himself to dwell in that part of the hemisphere of the brain that ignites the place of joy that allows the gamma waves of the brain to, to extend and filter out, and it's captivating, and it fills the entire room and the entire space with this field, as the Maharishi says, a field of invincibility. So we are the ones, you are the ones, I am the one who are shaping the plan. We are co-creators, and it all starts with an idea. So I'm going to shift what I'm saying here just a little bit. As I speak about being the co-creator, it starts with an idea. Now follow me on this, and I will bring it back. You have an idea. It's the holidays. You have an idea. You were, say, browsing an Etsy. You come upon puppets. Puppets. I want to make puppets. Huh. Lots of things in Etsy, but the puppet. The puppet consciousness is suddenly calling me. I can make puppets. I'm a, I'm a seamstress. I'm an artist. I, I can make puppets. I'm going to make puppets. I like this puppet. I'm going to get this pattern for this puppet. Now I need materials. I'm going to go to Joanne's. But is it safe? COVID. Is it safe? Shall I go? What is this potential field of COVID at Joanne's? What, what do I anticipate there? Now I'm, now I'm in fear. A moment ago, I was in joy and excitement and anticipation because I'm going to make a puppet. And now I'm a little bit afraid. Shall I worry? Shall I fear? Shall I forget that I even want to make a puppet? Can I move away from this divine idea now? No, I'm going to go make a puppet. That determination to prepare the way. I'm going to make a puppet. It'll be quick. I'll run in. I'm there. Yipes. There's reams of felt. All types of felt. All colors of felt. Wait, focus. I just need a puppet. One puppet. I'm just making one puppet. Maybe two puppets. What are my puppet needs? Off to the stuffing. Jeez, bags of quality stuffing. I could make thousands of puppets. Wait, stick to the plan. One puppet. Small bag. Don't be greedy. There's an abundance here. Now you watch, you see, this is how the divine works in the play of consciousness. This is what we all deal with, this abundance, this 
impress of, oh, the more we can do, but we have to stay focused on our divine plan. We are preparing the way. So we go to line. We're number 79. And we're standing in line. We're patient. We're cool. We've got our objects. Arms are full, loaded. We're ready. We're waiting. We're 79. What is taking so long? And then we look over, and there's only one clerk helping one couple with reams of their divine idea. Blankets, sport blankets, sport cover blankets. One from every team of the NFL. In, is that how you say it, NFL? The whole, the whole bunch of these things stacking up, and I'm thinking, how many is she gonna make? What kind of divine idea does she have? I'm starting to get impatient. And then I'm thinking, hmm. Now this is imploding upon my divine idea. I'm going to make a puppet. I've had fear, worry. I've had the, the, the distraction of too much. Not enough. Will this be right? Starting to question my divine idea, my puppet. And now I'm impatient because somebody's making blankets. I don't want one of those blankets. I start judging their blankets. I don't want a blanket. I hope nobody ever gives me one of those blankets. I wouldn't know what to do with one of those blankets. And I was thinking, who are you? You're not on their list. So I pull back, and then they pull the next number. I'm 79. They call out 78. There's no 78 anywhere in the room, but they keep calling 78. 79. We stand in line. It's our turn. And we realize, proudly declaring through our mask, I'm going to make a puppet. And the clerk could care less. He's just cutting the material. It means nothing to the clerk. Sometimes our divine ideas mean nothing to anybody else. But who knows how we really feel inside? That's part of this divine plan and the preparing the way as well. We just have to do what's called for us to do. It stops right there. And that's how it goes, creative minds. All of ours eager at this time of the year to follow through with a plan. So I bring it back as you invest your days, these final days, these shopping days, these creative days, to find opportunities to remember and to simplify and to come back to what is my heart? What are the answers? As I say, what should I do? What can I create here? What can I do? You could go, you could have been one of these many people. Oh, look at all the choices of these animals upon the stage. We ask for a stuffed animal and we have this, we have sheep and lambs and, and bears and sloths and, and dolphins and dragons and this cute little um, hedgehog, little lamb, little caterpillar. Look at the abundance. It will all unfold in perfection and it'll all be an outpouring. All of it represents love. So here is where Ernest Holmes said, there is a divine pattern for humanity. And within this pattern, there is infinite harmony and peace, cooperation, unity, and mutual helpfulness. We know the mind of every man being one with the mind of God is discovering the way to best allow this flow of divine love between all people and nations to be made manifest. We are each a part of this great peace unfolding. We have that heart of peace planning our way. Now, in a lovely book I have called The Brain Sutures, Sutra, Sutras, not Sutures, <laughs> that would be in medical world, Sutras, by a Martin Wootke. He says, simplify, simplify, simplify. Life can be simplified and arranged so that we shift our time allotment from mundane matters to spiritual pursuits. First, we devote some time every day, here it comes again, to prayer, to meditation, to study the nature of consciousness through spiritual literature and devotional practice. Eventually, our spiritual senses begin to awaken there is nothing wrong with socializing, cultural engagements, or media entertainment, but we need to be discreet and on guard to what we let in to our consciousness. Over time, as we progress, we will find that many of the mundane pursuits 
have only provided temporary satisfaction and mostly a waste of time, and they lose their attraction. The satisfaction and pull of our unfolding soul awareness begins to overwhelm all else. Think about that, the pull of the unfolding of your soul awareness. Over time, we find that every spare moment is given to a spiritual discipline, not because we should, but because we realize it's the single most important thing that we can do. Soul satisfaction we experience as a result is beyond words. We arrange our lives around spiritual disciplines rather than trying to fit it in. This does not mean that we have to become renunciants, isolate ourselves from this world, or live like a hermit. True renunciation is not an outer condition. It's not happening by avoiding, depriving, or taking things away. One can have nothing and be attached to everything. So in truth, renunciation is internal and means we can enjoy all that comes to us, but simplify and don't be attached. We renounce our attachment to the things of the world so we can find our real satisfaction within our soul in communion with the divine, in communion with God. Words, wise words from Martin. And he recognizes these sutras, these threads tied together all of the great philosophies from, from times past. They are the whispers from the ancestors in our world. And we recognize how important it is to dovetail these truths together and to operate our lives and allow them to lay out our plan. And we then honor the intuitive knowing what gift is birthing inside of you to co-create, to give to another. And what are you really giving to the other? Joy and love. So in, in closing, there's a Rupert Shedrake who wrote, to go beyond and why, why this works in, in doing the meditation and the prayer practices as part of the th um, preparation of your way in the world because we are on the threshold of a new era of the exploration of consciousness, both through the revival of these spiritual practices and also the scientific study of them. After several generations in which science and spirituality seem to be in opposition, they are becoming complementary. Together they are contributing to an unprecedented phase of spiritual evolution beginning now, and this spiritual evolution is accelerating. So here we are, simplifying. We allow ourselves to be the ones that wake up to this greater truth, to this greater understanding. None of us can afford to step away from this plan now. We're too invested. We're in this together. We're the ones that have been preparing the way. So I'm going to invite Judy to, to start to play the keys. And then the keys, the music, the melody takes us inward. And there's a beautiful prayer that I begin my prayer with. To love God with one's whole heart is to make these words ring true to you. They were made famous by Dag Hammarskjöld. For all that has been, thanks. To all that shall be, yes to all that shall be, yes. To all that has been, thank you. So preparing the way, we drop into that consciousness that knows that there is a lead in this moment, a divine lead, and we drop into that knowing that we are divinely led and guided in all the moments of innocence and truth. There is a power in the divine. There is an encouragement in the divine as we hear it whispering softly or boldly declaring, 
in moments of truth, what is ours to do? To prepare the way for a, a global consciousness of peace, a global consciousness of love, to sprinkle down upon the earth like snowflakes falling from the sky and gently caressing the earth with a blanket of, of white peace, a feeling of cleansing, of dropping our armor one to the other, to drop the way we have guarded each other's conversations in order to maintain a sense of being civil to one another. We come together in the heart, in the divine heart, and recognize that all that is dividing us is no longer that important at all. What is evident here is a call for love, and a call for truth and a call for empathy one to the other so much loss so much death so much sadness let us help one another to lift that up into that deep place of divine joy of divine understanding of divine grace so to each of you out there recovering from the COVID experience we hold you up to those of you that are in grief because you have lost someone that you love so dearly, we hold you now. To those of you that have chosen to just put package up Christmas and put it away, we hold you and we give you the gift of our love to reawaken that kernel of joy, that in childlike anticipation inside of you that love is all there is. So reach out to one another now. The way has been prepared. We are the ones doing this great work. And together we are thankful and grateful. And together we say, this is the way it is. It is so. And together, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Sue. That was beautiful. So now we come to the, the normal part of our service where we do an offertory, but uh, so I would just say that if you want to support this center, there's many different ways. You can go to our website and there's a way to donate from the website. You can also uh, send a check or drop something by or mail it. But we do uh, appreciate your support because we do continue our work even in this time of COVID. We continue to have Zoom classes. We continue as practitioners to be available for anyone who, can, who wants to call us. We continue to have our Zoom classes and we continue to, to thrive in this uh, unique time. So with that, we give great thanks for everyone who supports this center, whether it be through one-time donations or renewing their pledge, we appreciate it all and we know it's all good and, and it goes back into the community and to you in the law of giving and receiving. So I want to uh, close this service with a song by Dalton, who isn't here today, but we're going to play a recording by Dalton and then we'll soon I will get up and, and say goodbye and wish you well for the day. So we're going to Dalton now. <laughs>
If you have a few more moments, I would recommend you taking some time to just pull the volume back or pull the little um, replay to hear his song again. And the most simple way is to have the reverence as you listen to bow in your home to bow to your own heart and to listen again to a relevant song from Dalton's to yours. Have a beautiful week. You are loved. Thank you for being here today. <laughs>